There's this little word in Java called this, and it's pretty confusing. But today, I'm gonna to show you exactly how to use the this keyword in Java. And we're gonna write a program together, and it's gonna be great, and you're gonna see exactly how it works. But first, if you're new here, my name is Alex. I make a Java tutorial on this channel every single week, so if you might be interested in seeing that, then please consider subscribing. So let's start using this in Java. Um, we'll just start doing, doing a new Java project. We'll call it something like this example. And then inside of there, on source, we'll go to new class and call it like, this is fun because this is so much fun. Okay, now we're all set up. Java is an object-oriented programming language. To represent objects, we pretty much have a class. This class represents an object, like in the real world. Like I have a dirty spoon here um, from soup when I, that I made when I was sick. But this dirty spoon is an object in real life, and it could be an object in the computer. It has attributes and things it can do. So to make an object in the computer, we give it attributes and things it can do. The this keyword basically lets you set variables up here easier. So if we have two variables up here, just like any class would have variables up here, and we have a method to set them. So say it was like a static void method, um, said set data. And we wanna set, um, it should be data, not date. And we want to pass in integer a and b. And then we want to set the a up here equal to the a in the parameter and the b up here to the b in the parameter. Well, you would think that we could just set a equals a and then b equals b. Since these two variables are the same, that can confuse Java. So we'll just call set data and do like four and three. And then we'll print out a and B, like this. And since these are up here and they don't have the static keyword, we have to do this kind of um, around, like workaround way, where we create this object. This is fun, and then access these after. So we say that this is fun object, call it T, New this is fun. And then instead of A, we gotta do t.a and t.b. Cool. If we run this, then we get zero and zero. A is zero and b is zero. But why? We're calling set data. It should be four and three. So let's kind of try to look and see what's going wrong here. When we click the green run button, it goes into the main method and then it starts going line by line. So it sees this method set data and we pass in a four and a three. And since this method is in the same file, it knows what it does, and it does whatever's inside these curly braces. Then we try to set variable a equal to whatever we passed in. So this should be the same as a equals four, b equals three. After that, we access a and b through this t object, which should get these. Then why is it zero? Well, it's because since these are the same variable, it confuses the computer. The this keyword lets it know that it should be up here. This object's variable A and this object's variable B. So this dot A equals A and this dot B equals B. This keyword will not work with anything related to being static. So if you have something static, just remove it and then it'll start to work. Now we see a run underline under the set data method and in order to use it, now since it's not static, we have to call it through this object. So we have to do t dot set data, four and three. Now if we save and run it, everything works as expected. So what's happening now is it knows that this is four and this is three from set data four, three. It's saying this object, this means this the top class name. It basically creates this object for you and stores it into this. So this is the same thing as saying, this is fun.a equals a. We're specifying this exact variable a rather than, well, it could be the one in the parameter. The reason that this exists is not just for convenience, because it is super convenient, 
to say I want these exact ones. But there are also problems if you try to create the class and then set it inside. So if we try to do this is fun, t equals new, this is fun. And then we try to do t.a is that and t.b is that. This would actually come out as 0, 0 because we're creating a brand new object and it's like being confused. This is just a reference to say these variables up here. One workaround, if you don't want to use the this statement and you're confused, you can just rename these. And then you can say C equals A and D equals B. And then we're going to print out C and D instead this time. So honestly, that's what I did a lot because this could start to confuse me and I would just rename it because I don't need to use this if it knows what all these variables are. 99% of the time when you're going to use the, this statement is if the variables are the same as what's in here. So I'll just do another example. If we had a string um, name and um, actually let's do the dirty spoon example. That's fun. We can do string food for what kind of food is on the spoon and then like a char size for whether it's a big spoon or a large spoon. If we wanted to set, we'll call it set data again, and we want to pass in the food and the size, these names are super convenient because it tells me exactly what to put into this method. If I wanted to do um, set data with the food soup and the size L for large and print out food and size. These names, food and size, are so useful to me because I know exactly what it is. If these are weird abstract names like A1, G5, that wouldn't make sense to me. So a lot of the times I'm going to want the food and size variables named that because they help me know what's going on. And I can say this.food equals food and this dot size equals size. And that's so easy and we get it working here. I wouldn't want to change this to something else like um, food type or length, something weird, and then change it again. I mean, it'll still work, but it, it might just confuse you more because length and size aren't exactly the same when you read them. But yeah, this just lets you say that the variables are up here, basically. And it, and it does that um, because this refers to this up here, public class. Whatever class name, it's referring to that. And saying this class name, well, whenever you do a dot after an object, like um, t dot, it shows food size and the methods. So with this, we're doing this dot, this dot, and it sees food size and the methods. So it's just like having an object, but it's not creating a brand new object and then confusing the program by making an object inside of a method inside of an object. So yeah, that's been the this keyword. Um, this is really basically 99% of what you're going to use it for, is for accessing the, the variables up here. If for whatever reason you can't get it working and you're struggling, because I know that there's a lot that goes behind it with seeing what the object is. Worst case scenario, if you really need to get something working, just change the variable names up here. And again, super important piece about this and I, what I feel like is confusing people the most is that it can't be used with static. I have a video on what static is on, up on the screen now if you want to check that out. But basically static lets you like not have to create an object and set it. And I think it also means like there's only one. So if I said static string food and static char size, then it's saying that this should be accessed in a static way and it just messes things up. So like if if this method was static, public static void, then the this keyword wouldn't work. So if there's anything to do with static, just know that the this keyword is not going to work 
remove the statics, and then you know that this refers to the class up here. If you do a class and then a dot, it shows things like the attributes and methods and just use it that way. I hope this has helped you out because I, I had a lot of confusion with this. If it helped you out, please leave a like. If you're new here, subscribe and hit the bell and I'll see you in the next video. Have a great day.